So for question four, a toy railway locomotive of mass 0 0.8 kg is towing a truck of mass 0.4 kg. It's on the straight horizontal track and it's moving at a constant speed of two meter per second. And now I hope that by now you understood the idea of constant speed it means that the value of A is equal to zero or you can also say that F net equal to zero. Now there is a constant resistance force of magnitude 0 0.2 Newtons on the locomotive. So resistive force on locomotive. So let's say force L, or I can say force of resistive on locomotive is 0 0.2 Newton. And no resistance force on the truck. All right, so the force of resistance on the truck is equal to zero. There is a light rigid horizontal coupling connection the locomotive between this basically the locomotive and the truck. So the kind of diagram that we can draw over here is, let's say that we are having, I'm, I'm just going to draw an extra space over here for us so that the diagram looks complete. All right. Okay, so now let's say that this is a horizontal track over here. And now there is a locomotive and truck. So let me draw a locomotive. and a truck may be somewhere over here, let's say with a square, okay? Now this is having a mass of 0 0.8 kgs. This is having a mass of 0 0.4 kgs. They are connected between this, some kind of horizontal coupling. So let's say something like this. And the resistive force is acting on the locomotive. So on the locomotive, we know that on the back side, it is 0 0.2 Newtons. Obviously, there will be some kind of a driving force because of the engine of locomotive. It is producing some kind of a force of driving. And now because there is some kind of a coupling connection over here, there is also a tension that is acting in the opposite direction to the force uh, on the locomotive. So that's the tension for the locomotive. And in the opposite direction over here also, there is a tension on the truck. Anytime when you are given this kind of conditions, always the this first tension is against the direction of this force. And over here, it will again be in that direction that is opposite to this tension. So this rule, I hope you all are aware about. But yeah, that's how I'm getting this idea of how why these tensions are facing in each uh, and on each other. All right. And now in the first part, Okay, there is one more uh, thing that is uh, two meter per second is the constant speed. So constant speed is two meter per second, right? And the acceleration is also zero meter per second squared. And now we're asked to find the tension uh, in the coupling. So what is the value of this tension, right? That's what has been asked. So now one thing that we can straight away see that because the whole motion is not having any kind of acceleration, because of the constant speed, we can say that this tension over here is again, see, it's not having any kind of other forces. This truck is only having one force that is uh, because of this tension that is acting in this direction. There is no force acting on the backward side, no air resistance, no friction, nothing. So how is this T getting balanced? Because we know that the overall acceleration for this body, overall acceleration for this body, and the acceleration of the whole system, all of them are going to be equal to each other. We know this from the concept of this chapter. So now we know that the acceleration value is zero. So how will this acceleration be zero if there is a force? It automatically means that the tension over here must be zero. And therefore the answer of part A straight away becomes T is equal to zero. So that's the answer of the first part. Coming on to the B part. Now we are asked to find the power produced by the locomotive's engine. So now because we know that the value of the tension is zero, this FD must also be equal to 0 0.2 because we have to balance this force to create acceleration of zero, right? So FD is also equal to 0 0.2 Newtons. Now the velocity is also given to us as two meter per second. It's not two meter per second square, it's just two meter per second. So velocity is equals to two meter per second. Therefore, we know that power is equals to force multiplied by velocity. So it's going to be 0 0.2 multiplied by two is equals to 0 
four watts. So we are done with part A and part B. Let's see what part D is, oh sorry, not D but C. What does part C having for us to solve? Let me get rid of this kind of extra lines. So now we are having that the power produced by the locomotive is now changed to 1.2 watts. So initially it was 0 0.4 watts. Now it's changed to 1.2 volts. All right. Find the magnitude of the tension. You have to find the value of this tension in the coupling at the instant that the locomotive begins to accelerate. So once we are increasing the power, the acceleration will be experienced by the system because of which now there will be some kind of a value of this tension. And that exact value is what we have to find for part C. So let's think about it. So now we know that when the power was 0 0.4 watts, at that time the velocity value was 2. And uh, the moment that we are producing this kind of power, right? we are changing the power from 0 0.4 to 1.2 volts. So now what will happen over here? To find out what is the force acting because of the driving force uh, due to this change in power, we can say that force is equal to first of all power over velocity, right? because we know that power is equals to force into velocity. So now power is equals to, I mean force is equal to the power value and the moment when we are just changing the power, right? Once it will start accelerating. So at that time, the value of the velocity will be two, right? Once we are just changing. So now the answer of the forward force or the driving force is coming out to be 0 0.6 Newtons. So now we are having a new value for the driving force. So now because of this, I can create a whole equation for the tension and the acceleration for the locomotive and similarly for the truck. So let's do that. I'll say that for locomotive, for locomotive, the F net equals to M is what we are going to implement. So F net is equals to the forward force or the driving force is 0 0.6 minus the resistive force 0 0.2. There is also a tension, so minus T, right? The, every force is in the forward direction minus every force is in the backward direction. That's what I'm doing only for the locomotive. If you want, you can also do it together for the system, but I like to do it separately. So now we know what is F net, right? And we also know the mass is equal to 0 0.8 kgs for locomotive. We just have to find the final equation. So this becomes 0 0.4. Or else I can just write it over here. This becomes 0 0.4 minus T. Now we also know that F net equals to MA. So therefore we can say that 0 0.4 minus T is equal to 0 0.8A. So now this is one equation. And now let's create an equation for the truck. For truck. Again the same thing. F net is equals to MA. Over here, there is only one force which is acting in the direction of the motion. So it's T, there is no force acting on the back side, is equals to 0 0.4. So now we can just substitute the 0 0.4A over here. So therefore, what do we get? This implies 0 0.4 minus, or else because we want to find the magnitude of the tension, right? So we can also make A the subject and substitute the A over here to basically just eliminate it, right? And then solve for T. So let's do that, right? No need to find the value of acceleration. So I can say that over here, A is equals to T over 0 0.4. And now let's substitute that over here. 0 0.4 minus T is equals to 0 0.8 multiplied by T over 0 0.4. So this cancels out and becomes 2T and therefore, if I continue this, it becomes 0 0.4 minus t is equals to 2t. And therefore, if you will solve for t, you will be getting the value of tension as first of all, when this goes to the right, it becomes 3t. So what is 0 0.4 over 3? That will be the answer of this question. So 0 0.4 over 3 comes out to be 2 over 15. So this is 2 over 15 newtons. And if I talk about in terms of decimals, it's 0 0.1333 recurring, all right?
So this is the final answer of part C of question four.